So welcome back to week four and we're going to be talking about StarMade news. So this week has seen five pre-builds and uh, no official release this week but it is inbound so as soon as it gets here we're going to have lots of new fixes uh, making the game a lot more stable for server owners. So I'm just going to take a look at the first pre-build so that would be on the 21st Monday at the beginning of the week. Um, <clears throat> So mostly fixes to bugs that were found with the uh, with various little optimizations and improvements. So you've got like the chain docking. So uh, anyway, fixed bug where only one ship can be docked at once. I mean, it's uh, I don't really want to go through every single bug fix because they're all uh, you know listed. Um, but there's a little bit more information on the next one. So um, moving on on the 25th Friday. Okay, we had a lot of new changes. So we've got some new admin commands. So slash faction underscore set underscore entity changes the faction of any entity. Uh, slash faction underscore set underscore all underscore relations space ally neutral or enemy sets all non NPC factions rela uh, faction relations to neutral ally or enemy. Uh, private messages can now be sent from uh, star mode or the console. So in the little command line there without being logged in. Um, shift clicking no longer eats items. Uh, there's a secondary weapon fire mode for AMC. If you right click, it'll dumb fire, so not focus fire, um, which is going to be quite nice for the shotgun builds. Um, fixed AI shooting at dead target and doing no damage. Uh, moving up, the weapon slot assignment is saved by player and ship. There's spawn, uh, spam protection for spawning cores. Um, and let's just see, here we go, fixed server crash when admin attempted to sector change player in a docked ship. We found that one and I'm so glad that got fixed because uh, I must admit I crashed my server four times before realising I was the one doing it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and yeah, so those are the main, there's plenty more in there but if you want to go through all of that then uh, like I say the uh, link is on the news if you just scroll down you'll find this pre-build and again all of these changes are going to find their way into the uh, current build so even if you miss stuff it's not a big deal because uh, some of it will get pushed to current build some of it won't so there you go the uh, shield change is not a nerf so schema posted a, uh, a little note here so I'm just going to read out his explanation for you the shield thing is not a nerf, it's a buff from complete deactivation when hit to just a little nerf on recharge. Basically before, when hit, shields will not recharge at all for the recovery time indicated in the build, mo build mode stats. Now when hit, shields will recharge but with a lower rate which just gets, which gets higher the more empty the shield gets. When the recovery time is over, the recharge will jump to 100% like before. So. Um, uh, testing that we did found that the shields are way, way more effective now. So, you know, it's not just like, I'd say shields have been buffed myself, but obviously it depends how big your shields are, because everyone has different max and recharges. Um, somebody originally, uh, someone straight away asked the question, he said, so 100 to 40% shielding, they recharge under fire at the lower rate, then 40 to 0, they recharge faster. Is it a sloped relation, like a max recharge at 1%, then linear to 40%, then constant to 100%? And schemas replied here, <coughs> it's basically a percentual relation. So if you have 100% shields, the first hit will give you 0% recharge. If you have 99%, you will have 0.4% recharge, and so forth. At 50% shields, you have 20% recharge, and at 0% shields, you have 40% recharge. The recharge is now also indicated in the shield bar, so it's easy to keep track. Yeah, there is actually a numeric percentage uh, indicated down there, so that's a new addition. So, moving on to the next pre-build, that would be for the 26th Saturday, um, and weapon balance. So, he's saying, as people pointed out, the main problem of weapons versus shields is weapons work on a per-group basis, and shields as a total. While there are new shield features, focus on direction while flying, planned, there was no need to give the, the weapons something that would make the competition between shotgun builds as many small weapons as possible, and the more powerful bigger guns a bit more fair. 
Uh, single weapon groups connected to the same weapon computer will not have increased power consumption per group. The power consumption of a weapon before was count of the weapon blocks in a group times 10 per shot. With the new system, for each new group of weapons, each will consume 10% more power. So basically, 10 weapon groups will result in count of the weapon blocks in a group times 20 per shot of each one. The purpose of this was to have a value to scale down the efficiency of small but many group approaches for bug but few approaches to be able to compete with it. So, bug but few. Interesting. Uh, please keep in mind that this is just a test and in no way a final decision. Um, so it's still being balanced. It needs more testing. I'm encouraging people to go and have a look on the uh, dev build. So you click on the link for the latest pre-build and the latest news and then you use dev and dev. You can go immediately and join to play.star-made.org colon 4242 if you want to check out the pre-build in not single player, okay? Uh, and like I say, send your bugs in, uh, anything you find or any feedback, post it up in the comments here. Uh, so other changes from this pre-build, non-turret local AI search range from 750 to 2500, which is about what a player can target. The shield under fire base value to 25%. AI will now engage at a weapon range that is more sure to do damage and implementation implemented chain docking to work with the blueprint system. Okay, so those are the updates for that. And this is the last one now, the last pre-build that actually came out today, 27th. So he said, thanks for your input. He's going to try the current version for now as this update needs to go live. It's true, I can't wait for the new build so I can uh, do a little exodus for all our players and all their sectors across. Anyway this pre-build we have fixed physics duplication problem with chain docking when undocking the middle link fixed the crash when switching to wedge in advanced build mode from upside down spike fixed the bug where AI simulation would spawn blueprints with a name longer than the limit in SQL database the name gets truncated now optimized file management as not stall as much for header writing so it's all very technical stuff this this uh, this week so I uh, haven't got anything uh, other than that to show you. But um, hopefully the new release is going to come to us next week. I may even do a sort of special when the... A little special news feature when the update comes rather than waiting till the end of the week. I was hoping that it might come today, but uh, it's no problem. The longer the better. I prefer, uh, you know, it'd be more stable if they have more time to work on it. So, can't wait, but will. <laughs> So now we're going to move on to the ship of the week. Um, this week, the ship of the week is the Nebuchadnezzar by Pirate Ray, and there'll be a link um, both as an annotation and in the description. So please do go and check that out. It's a really nice ship, inspired by the Matrix, of course. Okay, um, with additional sails because it was a solar sailing racer for an event that we're running over here. The station of the week was a. a group build uh, group speed build challenge by some of the people who helped set up the solar regatta last weekend checkpoint two um, and it was built by a number of people um, the video will also be linked in the annotation and in the description on the left hand side and uh, I, I'd like it if you could check that out and comment tell people what you think it took them half an hour to build it um, and like I say, I think there were four people involved in building that uh, particular checkpoint station for the race. So thanks for watching uh, official StarMade weekly news and please do come back and see us again next time. Thanks for watching.